Welcome back everyone, this is Tucker, let's talk weather. Dangerous heat continues to impact the US, but I see a huge change coming this week. But with big changes come big storms, where you should be prepared for severe weather in the coming days. Welcome back in guys, good to see you again. You know, you ever think to yourself, I wish summer was a little bit shorter? Because if you do, I totally cannot relate. But, but I do understand there's a lot of heat out there if you're thinking about it this week. You know, the heat, of course, spawning storms too. In fact, if we take a look at our satellite right now, you can see those storms blowing up as I record this here on Sunday. Uh, those storms in the Midwest and East Coast and more, even bigger storms actually in the North Central US too. So we got this active weather pattern. We got to talk about some truly dangerous heat. Of course, severe weather always presenting a danger and the huge change that's about to occur as we begin August. So without further ado, let's jump in. You know it, you love it. We're starting with a look at our jet stream. It's really making some big shifts in our weather, some big waves, if you will. And you gotta look at this feature first. You see those uh, closed off black lines? Those tell us basically that we have this really hot air mass out here in the southeastern US. And that's why it's so hot across a good chunk of the country. That's a very expansive air mass. But meanwhile, we have our jet, which is mainly up in Canada right now, with a little bit of an exception. We have this extra impulse coming into the north central US and it's this piece of energy that's going to be driving severe weather. That's all wind energy you're seeing driven into this uh, hot and humid air mass and it's creating something that we call ridge riders. So here's our ridge, again that circle I, I showed you earlier. And these ridge riders, they, as the name would suggest, kind of ride along and over the ridge, generally bringing severe weather to the north central US, which is what we're looking at here on Sunday and Monday, and sometimes even getting into the northeast. And as I move this forward into Tuesday, you're seeing the jet begin to collapse at this point. There is a little bit of a ridge out here. I should have said ridge, not jet collapse in there. The jet stays strong. Uh, but now you have your energy kind of bowing over a little bit farther south. You have an extra impulse up here where the polar and subtropical jets are kind of coming together. Um, and this is going to bring the opportunity for severe weather a little bit farther south. And it's also going to suppress the heat a bit farther south too. And uh, one more thing you're going to notice as we move this into the end of the week. First of all, it gets really, really quiet here to start August. I mean, there's going to be almost nothing moving in the upper levels of the atmosphere, which means no big storm systems. Uh, also, you're going to see this ridge builds a lot bigger out west. It is going to get hotter out west, but relative to normal, this isn't too unusual. And uh, we're going to get into actual temperatures here in a moment and talk about those severe chances too. You ever look up on a hot summer day and think, man, 3,000 feet up, the temperature must be really high. All right, that one might have been a bit of a stretch. But we can look at that here on our weather map, and those temperatures a few thousand feet up translate directly to the surface. So what you're seeing is this hot air mass, which has generally overtaken the entire eastern U.S., and and will remain dominant as we get into the start of the week. Uh, you're going to see some of the highest anomalies in the north central US, but I will add there's a little stipulation. It doesn't perfectly translate to the ground, so that's not necessarily where the hottest ground temperatures will be, and we'll, we'll show you that here in just a second. The point I'm making with this map is that it's going to be very warm across the eastern US, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Not just warm, very hot in fact. But after Wednesday, we have a very big shift in the pattern coming. Doesn't look like much because they're not bright blue colors, but you have these temperatures that are now going to be colder than average beginning to sink in and overtake the US. And just because it's been so hot, that's gonna be a huge change as we move into the later days of this week. Okay, okay, what you've all been waiting for, actual temperatures here, and what you can see are highs that are generally in the 90s and 100s across a huge chunk of the US. I mean, basically, uh, really Monday, almost everyone's in play to be in the 90s in the US. That doesn't happen super often. And Monday may cumulatively be the hottest day of the summer in the country. Uh, I'll also add, we're looking at uh, hundreds here in the southeastern US, if you are to the east of the Appalachian Mountains, that's really darn hot, you know, and those places get hot. That's hot for you guys out there too in the Carolinas. We move this into Tuesday, your Tuesday high temperatures still very widespread in the 90s, hundreds as far north as Kansas. Of course, the southwest is going to be well into the hundreds, east coast into the mid 90s on Tuesday, all the way up to New England. Wednesday's high temperatures here, still very hot, but you can see that cold air beginning to collapse now, and that's going to make a huge difference as we head into the middle days of the week. I will add, it is going to get hotter in the middle of the week if you're in the Rocky Mountains region or west. 
but for most of the U.S., we will begin to cool at this point. Thursday, you can see temperatures continuing to be suppressed farther south, those hot temperatures at least. And Friday, we really see this uh, begin to level off. Even the south, you know, southern tier of the U.S., with the exception of Texas, the southwest, the valley in California, and, you know, the deep southeast. Like, we're really looking at much, much cooler, much more tolerable le levels of heat. Those are 70s and 80s across much, much of the country on Friday. And on Saturday, the heat begins to build back just a little bit, but it's really more warmth. We're talking 80s in the plains. Uh, pretty usual stuff. And it's going to be a very comfortable weekend and really as a whole start to August for most of the U.S. Another really useful tool when looking at the risk from heat is the NWS heat risk map. Go figure. Well named. But what we're seeing here are areas that are at, you know, pretty high risk for heat related issues. And anything shaded in red, that risk is getting pretty high. Shaded in purple there, you can see especially in the southeast. I mean, you take into account humidity, we're talking feels like temps up to 115 to 120 degrees. That's when the heat gets dangerous and you really need to prioritize things like hydration. That was your Monday. Here's Tuesday, Wednesday, and now Thursday. And eventually, as you can tell, as we get later in the week, that heat threat collapses. This also takes into account averages, climatological norms. That's why you're not seeing as much bright red here because the infrastructure can handle it in the Southwest better. Um, but out here in the Southeast, that risk is certainly notable. And if you're in the deep South, that may continue until we get to the upcoming weekend. Oh, by the way, if you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so. You're gonna get my thoughts. I'm a meteorologist and uh, I'm always gonna keep it real with you guys here. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments, by the way. Well, you've probably heard cold air crashes into warm air, makes big storms. Well. It's not really as simple as that, but we're gonna keep it simple for you guys here. We're gonna tell you where the threat is. Well, not we, I'm gonna tell you where the threat is and what you should be prepared for as we get into this week. We're starting here with Monday. Here's our severe weather risk as outlined by the Storm Prediction Center. That's a level two threat. The risk is very likely to be upgraded once there's a little more forecast certainty. I expect we're gonna eventually see a level three risk here. And that's because we have the right amount of wind energy, the right amount of heat and humidity for storms to really thrive. And the risk is going to be you get a complex, you get a cluster of storms to form somewhere out here, and those storms are going to become more of a line and progress eastwards, perhaps continuing even pretty deep into the night. And this is the Ridge Rider type of thing I was talking about before. The risk on Tuesday is very similar, and it's the same thing that we talked about before. You know, that, that hot air mass, it gets a little more suppressed, and so the severe risk, it just moves along south with it. Those Ridge Riders still want to ride the ridge, and they're going to form farther west and progress east. And likewise, I expect this will be upgraded to at least a level two, if not, you know, I actually think it's likely to be a level three at some point somewhere once we get more forecast certainty. And by somewhere, I mean somewhere in this general area I highlighted. And in fact, I expect it'll be extended east as well into the Great Lakes region and portions of the Midwest too. And looking farther than that, while we don't have any outlooks from the Storm Prediction Center yet, machine learning's actually done a really good job recently. And this fits in with a theme that we've been talking about for severe weather chances. Wednesday, again, you can see the severe weather threat just sinking a little farther south. It extends into the northeast. I'm not sold the northeast is going to see severe weather at this point, to be honest. Could be some strong storms, but I, I certainly believe there is something to it out here in portions of the Midwest. And then Thursday, could there be severe weather in the Carolinas as the cold front moves in? The answer is yes, but I don't expect it's going to be anything significant. Um, that said, still something to pay attention to as we get later into the week. Here's our future cast, and what you can see here Monday is um, early in the morning, you have these storms out here. They form that line. They continue overnight. Then they're actually going to die out a little bit once we get into the morning. Then we're going to rinse and repeat. Here we go. As we get into Monday afternoon and evening, there's our storms, our cluster of storms forming. You're going to see them form a line and move eastwards here. That's what ridge riders do. And there they go. And that's, again, the severe weather threat into Tuesday morning. Guess what? Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning, same thing. Look at this. You get your cluster of storms, you rinse and repeat. They're going to move east. You know the drill. Let's just put it in motion so you can see it here for yourself. There it goes. And again, the model's sending it a little farther south. Doesn't necessarily mean that's going to happen you know, verbatim, but you get the idea. Once we get into Thursday, and we're talking morning more so here, you can see we have storms that are not as well organized, but popping up nonetheless out here in uh, portions of the East Coast. Yeah, that could be likely will be a low severe weather threat for some wind, perhaps some hail if you're uh, in the Carolinas, but it'll be less significant because our pattern is just falling apart a bit. That storm threat in general should continue uh, into Friday, and that's going to mainly be in the southeastern U.S. To be honest, I'm not putting much stock into this right now, whatever that's supposed to be. 
Uh, but we do have storms that are likely to be popping up in the southeast towards the end of the week. And the Rockies, as that ridge builds, the mountains work as high-level heat sources and can spawn storms. So if you're in the Rockies or around that area, um, expect some afternoon storms, as usual, as we head into the end of the week. The weekend, though, looking pretty darn nice. Again, still some storms popping off the Rockies, still some storms in the southeastern U.S., but this high-pressure system right here on the ground, that's going to keep a lot of us cool, a lot of us comfortable. Uh, expect some nice Labor Day weather, especially across the northeastern third of the U.S. as we head into the weekend. And um, that's how the start of August is shaping up right now. All right, we're going to leave it right there. And if you have any questions you haven't asked yet, be sure to put them in the comments. Uh, I'll answer each and every one of your weather questions. And we do this every other day. So be sure to check back for more weather information, more videos. Like I said, you're getting my genuine thoughts and all that. And um, yeah, stay safe with the heat, the storms. And I'll see you right back here next time, guys.